everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's Friday, TGIF. Uh, you know what? You got a long weekend, so sit back, relax. Let's start off with a road trip. Okay, we start our trip off. Anytime we're going out the island, we stop at the bagel store. And this particular bagel store always has a nice variety of uh, all types of cream cheeses and everything you want to spreads that you might want to put on it. But I always get the standard egg salad. Now, uh, you can see where we're going. We're heading to a place called Comset Historic Park. And uh, we're going to be, this little stretch of uh, road is what we're on right now. What's interesting about this stretch of road, if you look right here, that house straight ahead, and uh, I'll zoom in on it, that was where Billy Joel and Christy Brinkley lived. Uh, you know, that was a pretty... Pretty expensive house at the time, and in 2017, it went up for sale. You could have bought it for a measly $5.4 million if you had the cash. Now, getting into the park here, we uh, ran into this car. Have you ever seen one of these before? It's a Datsun. A Datsun 2000. I've never seen one of these before. I used to have a Datsun. It was, <laughs> that was some car. But... Uh, you don't see these floating around, I guess, because they really weren't made to last back then. But when we get into the park here, this probably is the most famous tree in the park. It's an old beech tree, and it's uh, if you ever went to the, my page, you'll see it at the... That's the picture I have on my page, and if you uh, walk under it, it looks almost like a weeping willow, but it's a beech. And if you look under here, you could see how the branches uh, kind of hide the, uh, the underneath of this tree and the trunk, and you can see all the initials that people have left on this tree over the years. And uh, I'm always fascinated by, uh, by old time trees and to think of how many people, how many thousands of kids have touched this tree and seen this tree. Anybody that's ever been to this park, even though this park is uh, pretty uh, hidden and not really well known and, and a little bit difficult to get to, but it is a lot of fun. If you ever get a chance on Long Island to go here, this is the park to go to. Now, it has so many different facets to this park, but we're going to go down by the water. And uh, this is the Long Island Sound that you're looking at off in the distance. And I, I just passed out as Connecticut, so this um, you could swim to Connecticut if you had the mind to, but it, it, it'd be a long swim. Here's a little bit of a, like, almost like a lagoon in here, and there's always wildlife. Lots of wildlife in this one part of the lagoon. It's just beautiful. I'll let you listen to some of the sounds of the uh, the ocean and the beach and just take a look at uh, what a beautiful, pristine walk this is if ever you get a chance to get out here. Now, I've been coming to this park for over 20 years, and the first thing you do when you get down to the beach is you, you scan the area and you look for a good skimming rock. Now, anybody worth their salt has had to skim rocks. You, you know, it's just, I think it's in our DNA, you know. I, do you wonder if the caveman ever picked up a rock and threw it into the water to see if he could skim a stone across the water? Because it's something that you just feel like doing. And then this part of the beach always reminds me of a certain part that every time I come down here, I think of one, an old movie I saw. It, and maybe you could remember the movie if you think back. Look at the water, the nice clear water and, uh, and uh, the stretch of beach down here. I mean, it always invokes memories of an old movie, I guess back from the 70s. Do you remember that movie?
Now, without a doubt, one of the most interesting life forms on this planet is right here in front of you, and it's called the horseshoe crab. And if you've never seen one of these, if you don't live by a coast or something, it is the most amazing creature on this planet, especially when you think that it's over 300 million years old, which puts it older than the dinosaurs. And look at it. It looks like a dinosaur. It looks like a tank. And you see that stinger in the back? It's not a stinger at all. It actually just is there to upright them. I'll put a link in the description if you want to find more about these. But uh, I've been flipping these and saving these and conserving these since I'm a kid. And I just love them. Horseshoe crab. Hey, we're back in the shop. Uh, that little hike, that little six and a quarter mile hike yesterday was a load of fun. Came home today. Had to do a lot of stuff around here. But uh, I started a, a restoration. And I was hoping to get it finished by uh, by today's video, but I can't. And I'm not going to rush the uh, the final part, which is uh, the handle and getting the handle done. So that'll be on Monday's video. I have all the footage and everything. But uh, I just want to talk uh, real quick now um, about uh, Kathy Harreen, a good friend of the show, uh, asked a while ago about cutting music wire. And I thought I would address that for the rest of the video. So let's go check now, that out. Now, before we get into cutting music wire, let's actually talk about what music wire is. Now, you know, as you know, there are different hundreds of different types of wire. And uh, for most of us, the wire that we'll use is, you know, we're cutting uh, for electrical purposes. We have a solid copper or stranded copper. Uh, we might even have a... Uh, a malleable, a, like a bailing wire or, or something like that. But uh, music wire is a whole different animal. And this is music wire. And basically what it is, it's they call it a, a spring wire because that's what springs are made from and stuff. But uh, what it is, it's a wire that uh, is so strong that it will uh, spring back and forth without bending and hold it and hold its shape. Now, uh, I got into it early when flying radio control airplanes. We use a lot of music wire. This would be used to make landing gear. And it's very strong stuff, uh, tremendously strong, very hard to cut. And unfortunately, if you try and cut this with a regular cutter, you can damage the jaws of your cutter. Um, you, this is called a Z bend, and we would use this here and for linkages and things like that because it, uh, it would be very strong for the size wire it is. Now, let me show you uh, how you would cut something. Now, like there are so many different types of cutters out there today. I mean, different types and shapes and sizes. And you say, well, what's made to do what? Well, first thing you have to remember is each one of these cutters is designed and rated to cut a specific type of material and a specific hardness. Now, you might think like these uh, channel lock, okay? These are the new ones, they said the extra high leverage because they use a smaller pin and the pin is up higher and it says the extra leverage, which means it'll cut through much easier when you're trying to cut through wire, okay? Now, you just cut through that and you say, okay, well, it cuts easier, but that doesn't mean the extra leverage doesn't mean that these jaws are any stronger, that it's going to be able to cut through something like this. If you tried to cut this music wire with these pliers, you would damage the jaws. So that's where a lot of people come in. They say, see this extra high leverage and they think that, okay, it's going to give me more leverage and more cutting power, but it's the jaws you have to be concerned with. Now, everybody should have an inexpensive pair. This isn't too inexpensive, but you should have an inexpensive pair. You could get these inexpensive, cheap ones, but they're uh, small bolt cutters, they call them. And, and what that means basically is that these are meant to cut a, uh, a, a different type, a harder type material through here. And it has, you know, just a setup of these have the leverage. But again, these are rated. You know, a lot of the old pliers used to be called music now, wire the old rated. music wire rated pliers would look similar to these you know they well they had these strange concoction that you know you the, the leverage would pull it up and because it's so hard to cut and then the jaws the jaws would be totally different you see how stout these are and you see the angle of that jaw now if you look at the angle of that jaw that might be like a 45 degree angle there whereas if you look at the angle of this jaw if you take a side profile it's going to be much sharper because these are meant to cut copper these are meant to cut steel and mostly you know obviously when the jaw only opens so much you know it's it has such a small amount of uh of uh of capacity that it could take you know it's you're not going to really overfeed this with music wire because it's made for smaller pieces of now, what's wire. interesting is a lot of these cutters will have if you look here you say well they're not touching at the bottom 
believe it or not, they're designed that way. It's made to be a two cut uh, part. So in other words, you would take your piece of wire here and you put it in and squeeze it. Now that's not going to cut all the way through. As you can see, it don't cut all the way through. But what it did was it made indents in there. You can see that there indents in both sides. Now you take those indents, you slide it up a little bit onto the top part of the jaws and that'll cut right through. And uh, that's like a what they call like a two uh, stage cutting jaws over here. But a lot of them are designed like that to cut through a harder material. If you material. go to Klein's website and you look on there, they'll have like three different styles of pliers. They all look identical. And you say, how do you know the difference? You know, sometimes they change around here what the, the feature is down here. But the, you say up here, it all looks the same. So how do I know? One is $30, one is $40, and one is $50. What's the difference? Well, it all has to do with the jaws, you know, and what they're rated to cut uh, and the steel that they use. So when you get the most expensive type, that's made to cut um, usually that uh, fish tape that's they use to uh to run through that can cut fish tape without damaging the jaws if you get the cheapest pair that's only made for cutting copper so remember that it's all about the now jaws. to answer kathy's question if ever you come across a thick piece of music wire like this this is 530 sec this is pretty thick uh, music wire if you have to cut this what i always used is a dremel and a whizzle uh whizzle wheel you know little wafer wheels and that cuts right through this you can't even cut this with a hacksaw i mean it's really tough stuff so i always prefer the dremel with the wheel to cut it but you know if you want to have to get a cutter it's like a, a bolt cutter or something like that you're always going to ding up the jaws and i, I hate to do it with hard wire so like in that. closing i know it's kind of a short one today i just uh, hope you have a great weekend and i'll give you a little bit of a sneak peek of uh, monday's project and take care now thanks very much bye-bye monday's project <gasps> wood